Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, it's uh, another two Americans uh, who died in Ukraine, and um, these are just the ones that are reported. I'm guessing there are some, not guessing, <laughs> I'm assuming that uh, based on evidence, no, an experience, I guess. Uh, there are the ones who probably are uh, not probably certain I, I can certainly uh, lost their lives but we don't know about and we will probably not know in uh, near future this article comes from Republic world and uh, it's uh, from today July 23rd two US citizens killed in Donbas region amid Russia Ukraine war says State Department Nearly a month after the two U.S. citizens were killed in the Russia-Ukraine war, a State Department spokesperson confirmed two more casualties in the disputed region uh, of the war-torn country. country. So uh, they were approved to be um, officially, you know, reported dead. According to a report by ABC News, the spokesperson told about the death of two American citizens in the Donbas region. As of now, the official believed that, that the duo had been fighting against the Russian troops in Ukraine. We can confirm that recent death of two U.S. citizens in the Donbas region of Ukraine, the spokesperson told the broadcast. So he believes and he confirms. Further, the spokesperson maintained that the Biden administration has been in touch with the families and assured them of providing all possible consular assistance. However, when the American broadcaster asked for further details about the duo killed in the war, the official reportedly denied revealing additional information related to identity. I wonder why. <laughs> Earlier in April, Willie Joseph Cancel, a 22-year-old former Marine from Tennessee, was the first American citizen who was killed while fighting in Ukraine. Subsequently, Stefan Zabielski, 52 years old, died on May 15th while participating in a comeback, according to an obituary published in The Recorder, the, a newspaper representing Montgomery County in upstate New York. Well, um, what can I say? That he would not mention the names of the two, of the two Americans who died. He would not confirm. This guy's just made the connection between those two and maybe the ones that uh, this uh, little uh, spokesperson uh, reported or at least confirmed. I'm pretty sure there will be. There, there are more over there. I mean, it's by probabilities okay probabilities and experience and uh, knowledge it's always been platoons that are um, how do you call them um, i don't want to say shadow but platoons but you know what i mean platoons that are not there but they're there on a mission and that cia functioning on the territory of uh, of ukraine as well and um, as it functions in in, uh, in um, russia as well so that's normal behavior but uh, I, I, I predict that let's say the war if the war starts today in about two maybe two years within two years after the end of hostilities whatever the the result would be uh, of this crisis we will be told we will find out that uh, there were Americans, not American citizens, you know, I'm just going to go over there and enroll in the army over there or to the International League of Helping Ukraine and so on. No, no, not like that. We will find out there were American military special troops over there. I mean, I'm, I know that you guys think, of course, Emil, it's, that's normal. But the fact that if you say that, in uh, uh, conversation with other uh, people they think uh, that you are just you know um, what I'm trying to say people are naive 
I mean, and naivety comes from lack of knowledge and knowledge uh, implies effort and interest. So if people have no interest to know about something, they would not put the effort into learning about it. So it's not necessary. Uh, they put effort in learning something else, which is fine. Like we, we put effort in this and we're interested in this kind of, uh, you know, issues. Some people are not, but some people are interested in something else that we are not. So there's no judging here. It's just that the subject that they don't care about and we do in this case. So when you speak with a lot of people, uh, I speak, not a lot of people, but I speak with people and uh, had conversations, pro and cons. A con is not that, uh, you know, I, I speak with uh, people that agree with me or so on. Uh, it's true that uh, the friendships are still there, but it's, it's a, uh, you know, you disclose certain um, certain details about certain issues to certain groups and sometimes it's useless to get into a really illogical conversation. Not illogical, but it turns into something else. Instead of being a uh, in search for the truth conversation, which is a debate, which, you know, I come with this idea, I support this idea, I bring you the arguments, you come with the other idea, um, could be opposite to mine. And you bring your arguments. I learn from your arguments, you learn from my arguments. If and if I say, okay, wait, 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 your argument, I don't, uh, I don't agree with it. I don't think it's there. Where did you get your argument? And then I go and do my research. And I do my research and find out if this argument that this person used was, you know, legitimate or not. And I enhance my knowledge, which is great for me. So as I always said, the winning a debate with a friend or, you know, I'm not talking about winning a debate in front of an audience. That's a different kind of debate because over there you're supposed to win. That's a more like weasel debate. I'm talking about talking with people and having an honest, uh, you know, fair conversation. Yeah, when you debate in front of others, you don't have an honest debate. That's for sure. You are over there to win. That means you're going to shut your mouth if it's against your interest to uh, 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 bring some uh, you know, so, uh, evidence to support his case. Like, you know, like in front of a judge, you're like a lawyer over there. You try to win even though you know your, uh, your client committed the crime. You still have to defend that guy, I'm guessing, right? So uh, the same here. Uh, when you have conversations, you, you learn. You learn and uh, if you're open. So um, uh, again, I'm pretty sure there is more than two that were killed. I'm sh pretty sure, that's why I always leave a little door, escape door, because you can't be certain. Uh, probability, high probability that uh, uh, special operations are over there conducted by the American under Americans and others, not only British and Germans and French. There are many other troops over there. I would be surprised if there's not. I'm surprised like uh, you tell me there's uh, no Christmas or something. That's how I will uh, uh, be, be surprised. <laughs> so I'm almost certain that's what I'm trying to say. Well, nevertheless, I'm sorry for the guys. They knew what they got in themselves into. And um, I'm not saying, oh, but when you go over there, it was another article by the, I think, defense minister of, U of Ukraine who said he was talking to the foreign fighters and he said, foreign fighters, if you want to come here, you have to accept that you might die here. You have to accept that you will, I know, you have to be prepared to die. This is what he said. So, yeah, that, that's the way you don't go over there to play the violin or have a little chardash, uh, you know, um, Hungarian dance, whatever. <laughs> I spoke about Orban in my previous video and it seems like my brain is still with Hungary. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.